Hello everybody and welcome to this news update. Today, Yen On announced that they had licensed four new novels, three of them light novel series, a fourth which is a number of short stories collected in a single book, and also they licensed another tabletop RPG which is based on a rather popular light novel series. So I thought I'd give you the rundown on what they announced so you can check all of these out. The first title that they licensed is called The Holy Grail of Eris. The story is by Kujira Tokiwa, with illustrations by Yuanagi. This has three volumes and the series is complete. Connie is a young noblewoman whose only standout quality is her sincerity. Maybe that's why she loses her fiancé and gets framed for a crime in the span of one night. Just as all hope seems lost, the ghost of an infamous villainess who was executed years ago possesses her and clears her name. With her incomparable charisma and intelligence, the spirit of Scarlet Castiel turns the tables in the blink of an eye. In return, Connie insists that she help uncover the truth surrounding her new benefactor's untimely death and a conspiracy that continues to this very day. So what's kind of cool about this is that Yen On is saying that this is a little bit different because it focuses quite heavily on a mystery element, which is something that anybody who's been a longtime viewer of the channel knows that I am a very big sucker for. So this one I am kind of interested in i mean the the setup sounded good from the start but when they're saying that it is much of a more mystery focused novel they've got my interest next up they licensed the vexations of a shut-in vampire princess this one is written by kote kobayashi with illustrations by richu this one has five volumes currently in japan and it is still ongoing this also won the Excellence Award at the 11th GA Bunko Award. Shut in Vampire, Tere Kokomari, or Komari for short, awakens from her slumber to find she's been promoted to a commander of the army. The thing is, though, her new squad has a reputation for being violently insubordinate, and although Komari was born to a prestigious vampire family, her hatred of blood has made her the picture of mediocrity, scrawny, uncoordinated, and inept at magic. With the odds stacked against her, will the help of her trusty maid be enough for this recluse to blunder her way to success? So this one, obviously much more of a comedy uh, series. They, in their press release, actually compare this a little bit in its feel to the eminence in shadow so uh that's a pretty good series that i know a lot of the people who view this channel have enjoyed at least even a little bit so uh, that one has me a, a little bit curious about this title in addition they also licensed warlords of sigurjifa rusalka now this one is a prequel series to the anime the story is by tape nagatsuki who of course is the author of re-zero so some pretty good pedigree there. Illustrations are by Takuya Fujima, with character design by War Wings Club. Uh, as I said, this is a prequel to the anime. There's two volumes. Uh, now, Nagatsuki actually wrote another two-volume prequel series that is after this one. That's uh, Warlords of Sigurjifa Sakura, but I don't think that's part of this license. I think it's just the Rusolka right now. The arrival of mysterious invaders known only as the Pillars threatens to wipe out all of civilization. Humanity's last hope rests in the hands of the Valkyries, young women bequeathed with supernatural aircrafts by the god Odin to send the Pillars back whence they came, a sky-high fantasy from the author of ReZero. So I actually didn't watch the anime of this one because I knew that it was being written by Nagatsuki. So I kind of thought that it was maybe based on a light novel, but it appears, I guess, that the series stands on its own. 
that this is just a prequel to the anime. So if you love Nagatsuki stuff, if you love the anime, this would definitely be something to check out. Finally, for the novels that they licensed, they licensed Jose the Tiger and the Fish. Now, that's actually a short story. It's one of seven short stories that are in this volume, all written by Seiko Tanabe. Unable to get around without a wheelchair, doll-like Jose leads a solitary housebound existence. But when she meets her new live-in caretaker, a recent college graduate named Suneo, everything in her life is upended. Jose the Tiger and the Fish depicts the fragile, strangely erotic relationship that blossoms between these two young people. In addition to the title story, this collection also includes seven short stories centering on working women and the myriad of loves and partings throughout their lives. Now, in their press release, they say that this short story was actually originally published in Monthly Kadokawa back in 1984. And since then, apparently it's been widely celebrated. It's been adapted into live action films in both Japan and Korea. And in 2020, it was made into an anime film. So this obviously is a series, a story that's had quite a following for a good number of years. Uh, I did not actually see the film. I'm guessing that's where they've gotten the image or the cover from. I'm curious uh, what your thoughts would be if you saw the movie. Let me know in the comments down below. And then finally, as an interest to light novel readers, they have licensed the tabletop role-playing game of Goblin Slayer. Uh, this is adapted by Tadaki Kawahito and Group SME. Uh, story is by Kumo Kagyu, who is the author, of course, of Goblin Slayer. Um, the Adventurer's Guild has a long list of quests for you and your party. Rescuing young maidens from ritual sacrifice, quashing a heretical ceremony in ancient ruins, and locating lost treasures within a crypt teeming with skeletons and specters. In this tabletop RPG set in the world of the Goblin Slayer series, you'll find faithful reproductions of the various races and classes taken straight from the novels. Now, this, of course, is very interesting because, of course, Goblin Slayer heavily influenced by D&D, by tabletop RPGs. So kind of coming full circle with this one. Now, of course, Yanon also recently licensed the tabletop RPG for Konosuba. So kind of interesting to see this happening. I'm curious to see how successful these are and to see how much more of these we might get. As I understand it, Japan has quite a number of TRPGs uh, and a number of them based on popular sort of light novel properties. So it'd be interesting to see just how many more of these we get and how well these do. And yes, even how well they play. So those are the light novels and novels and TRPG that Yen On announced that they had licensed today. Now, they also announced that they had licensed eight manga titles in addition to all of these. Some of them you might be interested in because they're manga versions of light novels. There's also some spin-offs of light novel series. If you want to check out all of those, I'll leave a link to the press release that's over on EnglishLightNovels.com in the description down below. So in the meantime, what do you think of these announcements? What are you looking forward to? What do you know of these titles? Let me know in those comments down below. In the meantime, thank you so much for checking out this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.